Now for a language, I really don't have a strict plan. I just want us to practice and explore together. So I'm gonna use my different resources, mainly the Duolingo because they've been really enjoying that. But I may also use the Rosetta Stone and when, whatever they cover during this time period, I'll just write it in. Whew, I feel like this video is getting super long. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Um, this is how I lay out my electives. Now, on the pages that I created for you guys, I left these off because I don't know what um, you guys chose to do or not to do, but this is just what we choose to do and this is how I split them up. I just wanna make sure that I cover an elective and then also a project. And I put them all down here in these boxes, but they're all interchangeable. I can pick one from each you know, category. So I could pick one elective, whichever fits that day the best, or one project, and one project. So here, I don't have anything to cover for French right now, and I won't always, but um, it is important to me, so I want to um, leave a space for that. But for music, I decided we would do music around the world. I had bookmarked some things on YouTube, and um, this will be our dance party time. And then for history, and you guys, let me just tell you that I messed that up and I had to cross it out and it took everything inside me to refuse to throw this paper away and start all over, okay? I don't like wrinkled paper and I also don't like the mistakes. I know I could use white out, but I don't have any white out. <laughs> so I had to just cross it out and make it look like a little tornado. So I'm just saying like, this was like legit progress for me to not try and use another piece of paper. I'm trying to be kind to the trees. So um, anyway, so yeah, so for history, we're gonna be doing Lego models. So cute. This is just a geography study and Lego creations. They just built the different landmarks out of Legos and I love that. And then for computers, we're doing what is a computer and what is coding. So this is just bookmarked with the post-it right in the front on the first page, which is what is a computer and what is coding for art. Um, art and geography could be one in the same here. I have the Lego flags, which I also found. That was an idea I found on Pinterest. And then for geography, I have our factivity book, which is discovering um, the earth. And then the earth paper mache, which is also art and geography. And the factivity book was, yeah, I just bookmarked that. So that's discovering earth and that's what we would cover during that time. For science, we would do the Factivity Science Organizing Animals. And for science is getting organized with the animals. And this I thought would actually be pretty cool because I could also um, do a more hands-on thing for Savannah using the, using the plastic animals. So we could talk about getting organized and I thought about just printing out some quick cards Mammals, birds, reptiles, that whole deal. And then just having them, you know, sort and organize the plastic animals. On the back of my weekly planner, I normally just write out my dictation sentences and um, vocabulary. So for vocabulary, they have a set of vocabulary that is relevant to the unit that we're studying. And then they also have a set of vocabulary that is just for building their vocabulary. So I put that on the back of each week's sheet because that is what I know we're going to cover. Here is the next week's planner and I just have laid out the verse and I have anything basic for Savannah. Then I have our book, I have our math, time and money, see how I leave them blank. Friday for me is planning day for the next week. So that Friday I will gate, you know, look at what we covered and see what we've moved on to and then I'll just quickly write that in along with whatever we've moved on to in science and history, Duolingo, and then all of these down here. So these don't actually get filled out until the Friday before because I have burned myself many a times, spending a lot of time trying to write all of these in and then we went further or we were not quite there yet and I just really got messed up. So now I just print out the three weeks with the basic information. Here's their dictation sentences and the vocabulary again. And this is how basically I plan for all three of them. Savannah's little section is over here on the side. Then the last part that I do is the event, which I haven't done yet. 
so that's okay. Where did I put it? These are my homeschool goals. This is what I just laid out in our curriculum, what we were using for curriculum video as well, but I just, um, this is how we do that. So Bible reading list, writing, and as we complete something, we just mark it off. So I haven't marked off a lot of things because I just rewrote them. Um, just because I just, the, the last one I wrote it on was just ridiculously messy. So I just rewrote them. And so I'll go and mark out the things that we've covered already. But that makes it really, really easy for me. And then I started mapping out our next unit. So this is going to be na na our neighborhood, explore our neighborhood, and let's build. And these are some of the ideas I had for that. So the last part of this unit that I haven't finished quite yet, and that's okay. I'm just catching up a little bit at the start of the new year, is the field trip planner here. This would be for our color unit. This is when we're going to plan to go to the Crayola factory. And um, then also my event planner. So the event for this year, like I said, I mean for this um, unit is going to be the geography fair. So I will just lay this all out here. Now I'm gonna fill out my month at a glance because <clears throat> it'll be easier for me. Now I'm gonna take a few moments to laminate these items. So I broke out my laminator. I had already laminated these two maps that I wanted to use. I got these off online at mrprintable.com, I believe. And so I only had two of them and I can't leave Savannah out. So I need to laminate this one. I also wanted to laminate these. I have to look back and see where I got these from. Oh, it says by Church House Collection. I really thought these were super cute and so I'm gonna cut these out and laminate these as well so they can put them into a storyline. And I had two printed out, so I guess I might as well laminate this one as well. Because everything is better when it's laminated. <laughs> Beautiful! Laminated. When I first started homeschooling, I'm gonna turn this off because I'm not quite ready to laminate the rest of them. But there's my other me on the map. But what I was gonna say is when I first started homeschooling and I started reading um, a lot about homeschooling, um, I came across a lot of books that um, talked about school at home versus homeschooling. And it always seemed to have some type of negative connotation attached to the idea of doing school at home and I understand why it ended up turning you know sounding like that because when you first start homeschooling well at least for me when I first started homeschooling it just felt like I needed to create this school environment at home and um, it is a, it's a conflicting space to be in because um, you want to create this school like you know, school-like environment, but it's very difficult to create because you're at home and all of your home stuff is staring you right in your face. Um, and I think you, you're trying to fit yourself into that mold and you, sh you know, very quickly realize that you don't fit there um, a lot of times. And so when they talk about it in homeschooling books, I think it's meant to encourage you to not try to fit that mold of schooling at home. But at the same time, um, what ended up happening for me was it started to create this idea in my mind that anything that mimics a school-like environment is a no-no in true homeschooling. And that became a really difficult place for me to be. 
I was trying to homeschool and anything that involved a laminator or some scissors or preparing lessons and stuff just seemed like they weren't wrong they weren't okay because it was more like you trying to make school at home that's why this year I had mentioned in my goals video that I wanted to focus on balance because I learned to understand that you know it was about balance that I understood where they were coming from and trying to introduce that concept to help you gain confidence in homeschooling but at the same time you just can't take it too far because then I started feeling like anything that was prepared was school at home and it wasn't true homeschooling and it wasn't beneficial and it was um, not a great way for your children to learn I'm gonna be honest, I feel like some, a lot of homeschooling books will kind of make you feel that way. And I've even seen books that will have statements like kind of downing the way that they do things in schools. And I found that to be disheartening because while I feel like there are a lot of holes in the school system, and there are a lot of flaws in the school system, I also feel like, or the ways that they do things are because of what they have to do. You have to have a strict schedule and um, a lot of prepared lessons when you're dealing with a classroom full of 27 plus kids. Like, I mean, if you don't have a schedule, I mean, how will you create any order? Or how will you get anything accomplished or done? Whenever I come across books that start to speak about the school system so negatively in that way, it's just, um, it's hard for me to swallow because there are holes and there are definitely things that need to be fixed, but um, I don't think that tearing it down is a good way to approach it. But anyway, that's like off topic. What I'm trying to say is that I started to create this distaste in my mouth for anything that reminded me of school. And so a lot of the things that I wanted to do, like print out papers and laminate and things like that, I just felt like I shouldn't be doing because that's not true homeschooling. Over the last year, the Lord has really been helping me to understand, you know, what I bring to the table and who I am and to learn, like, when is too much laminating, <laughs> you know, because I was laminating everything before and it's just not... It's not productive to laminate everything, but I've learned now the things that are good to laminate and good not to laminate. <laughs> Just little things like that I feel like you learn along the way in your homeschooling journey, but I'm really excited to be okay with my laminator now and my scissors and my paper and things like that and I embrace that part of the journey. And I know that um, most of the fruit as far as my children's learning and education is concerned um, doesn't come from these types of things but these types of things are just fun and so we do them so I've got them all here we go they're all cut out now I'm going to arrange them on my sheet my laminating sheet to try to keep them in place I use a glue stick so that's my little tip for keeping your laminating items in place so grab a little glue stick yeah so I use a little glue stick and that helps me helps me keep these in place when I put them down then I just take a little bit of glue on the back a little bit does very good and then put that down there And guys, let me know, like, I can make these videos longer or shorter. I tend to prefer shorter videos because I have a shorter attention span. But if you like the longer videos, I can keep them longer. Um, so just let me know. Just let me know what you would like to see from me. Okay, and that is the last thing I believe I'm going to be laminating. Now that I have that done, I just have to fill up our work boxes and then um, write on our chalkboard and I should be all done fresh done yay so now I'm gonna cut these out turn off my laminator and um, I'm gonna do my chalkboard and then I think because this video is getting very very long <laughs> I am going to do a separate video on what how I did the work boxes so I will just go ahead and continue to film, but I'll separate the work box portion from this portion and you can just head on over there to watch 
um, what I actually put inside of their work boxes and how I do that. In general, I fill up, I do a major refill of the work boxes like this um, at the beginning of the month or at the beginning of a new unit and then um, every day based on what we're doing or new items that we've gotten that add to or whatever's going on, I might add to the work boxes or take away from them. But I do this big, you know, emptying and refilling pretty much every unit, which for us is every one or two months. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and cut these out and then I'll have all my stuff ready for the work box video. But the last thing for this video I'll do is just do a quick little time lapse of what I put on our chalkboard this time around. So I'm not an artist, <laughs> but I have a lot of fun. It's therapeutic for me to do their chalkboard. So I'm gonna do that and that is going to be it. I just wanted to say I'm a little bit nervous because this one is really long, isn't it? <laughs> but um, I, I do think it's great. It's keeping me accountable and helping me not to just go with the flow for the rest of the month, but actually to stick to my plan and make sure everything is ready to for my plan to um, run smoothly or as smoothly as possible. So I enjoyed filming this video. The kids are still hanging out in there. They're waiting for me to get their lunch together and then we are going to get into some schoolwork. But um, at least this is really exciting to know that I am done with our preparing for our unit. So I'm excited and I was glad to have you guys along. I wish you could talk back to me right now. but. <laughs> But that's okay, maybe that'll come in the future for YouTube. Um, I know they have the You Now, like YouTube Live, but I feel like it would be, I feel like it would be harder for me to do this live. I'm not sure, maybe, let me know. Would you guys like an Insta story or something like that? Or I don't know, tell me any suggestions you would have for how we can be a little bit more interactive during, um, during planning sessions from time to time. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to me chat for so long and following me along in my planning this unit. I'm really excited about this unit and I think the kids are gonna be super excited. Um, I am going to do videos, of course, every day, or not every day, but throughout the days of the unit so that I can gather some good um, memories and a good log for our Evernote portfolio of what we did during the unit. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions. You guys have been so awesome. You've been reaching out to me in different platforms, so just bear with me because I'm trying to get a better routine of how to respond to everybody. Because <laughs> sometimes I miss some of the messages in different places I'm used to responding to everybody here on YouTube but I'm not as great with keeping up with everybody else in different places so just bear with me as I learn how to get into a better routine of responding to you guys there as well and thank you so much for watching this video and watching me plan. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see more from us. So if you wanna make sure that you're getting the notifications when I post, you can hit that bell button that's right next to the subscribe button. And I think that's it, you guys. <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I will see you in our next video. Bye.